Hello, we are back with Madam No Shamsia Biology Video, Chapter 9, Form 4, KSSM, Human Digestive System. Content standard for today's lesson is on 9.1, Digestive System, and 9.2, Digestion. The learning standard is 9.1.1, Identify the structure of human digestive system. 9.2.1 Describe the types of digestions that are physical digestion and chemical digestion. 9.2.2 Analyze the process and products of carbohydrate digestion in the mouth. 9.2.3 Analyze the process and products of protein digestion in the stomach. 9.2.4 Describe digestions of carbohydrate, protein, and lipids in the small intestine. Now, we look at the structure of human digestive system. Human digestive system is made up of a long and muscular, meaning it is made of muscle tissue, what we call as alimentary canal. So, this elementary canal start from the mouth okay, until to the anus. So, along the way, we all call it as elementary canal. The parts involved in the elementary canal are started from mouth okay, and then going to esophagus and then going to the stomach and then going to the small intestine and then large intestine before going to the anus. The organs involved are liver, this is the liver, gallbladder, this is the gallbladder, and the pancreas, this is the pancreas. Looks like a leaf there. The glands involved in human digestive system are salivary gland, salivary gland, okay, Near the mouth there gastric gland gastric gland is at the lining wall of the stomach and intestinal gland intestinal gland is at the lining of the small intestine digestion what is digestion digestion is a process that breaks down large and complex pieces of food into smaller and simple pieces. Why is digestion important? Because it makes the large and complex molecules just now into smaller and simple pieces so that it is easier for the absorption process. Digestion is made up of two parts that is physical digestion and chemical digestion. So what is the difference? In physical digestion, the food is break down to small particles. This is what we call as mechanical breakdown. It involves only chewing and peristalsis of the food. Whereas in chemical digestion, it is the decomposition process of complex molecule into simple molecule. Just now, small, this one, simple molecule from complex into simple. So in chemical digestion, it needs the involvement of enzyme for the reaction to proceed. Now we look at the digestion process of carbohydrate. The digestion process of carbohydrate starts in the mouth. The salivary gland will secrete saliva. In the saliva, there is salivary amylase. The function of salivary amylase is to hydrolyze or to break down starch into maltose. So you can see the equation here. This is the word equation. Starch plus water because it's hydrolysis process. So it needs water with the presence of salivary amylase enzyme will break down starch into maltose. The pH of saliva range between 6.5 to 7.5, which is the suitable pH for salivary amylase to act.
For the saliva, besides containing salivary amylase, saliva also helps food to form bolus. Okay, so when the food is in the form of bolus, it will make the food to be easier to be swallowed. When swallowing, the epiglottis will close to ensure that the trachea is closed and the bolus will go into the esophagus instead. So the food bolus is moved by peristalsis. What is peristalsis? Peristalsis is the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of muscle along the alimentary canal. You can see in the picture the muscular wall of esophagus contract this part and this part relax and this part contracts relax. So this one is what we call as peristalsis. So peristalsis will then push the bolus Okay, start from up here, going down. Push the bolus through the esophagus until the bolus enter the stomach. Now, if the digestion of carbohydrate starts in the mouth, it is different for protein. The digestion of protein only starts in a stomach. Okay, now we look at the surface of the stomach wall first. The surface of the stomach wall is lined with epithelial cells that have undergone adaptation in structure and function in order to form gastric gland. So this is the epithelial, epithelial cells, right? So this one is the epithelial cells. So you can see these epithelial cells are adapted into three different types of cells. The first one is mucus cell, second one is parenteal cell, and the third one is the chief cells. So what are their functions in these cells? Okay, so these three types of cells will form gastric gland. So the chief cells function is to secrete pepsinogen. Parenteal cells secrete hydrochloric acid. Mucus cell secret mucus. So all these cells made up of gastric gland. So this pepsinogen is actually an inactive enzyme that is only activated by the presence of hydrochloric acid to become pepsin. So what is the function of pepsin then? Pepsin will then hydrolyze or break down protein into polypeptide. We look at the word equation here, protein, with the presence of water because it is hydrolysis process with the help of pepsin, okay, then protein will break down into polypeptide. Just now, we look at the function of pepsinogen in the gastric juice. Now, we are going to see the functions of hydrochloric acid and also mucus which also are in the gastric juice. Okay, the functions of hydrochloric acid, there are three functions. The first one is to prepare a medium with suitable pH for the pepsin to act optimally. For the pepsin to act optimally, the suitable pH is between 1.5 and 2.0, which is acidic. Second function of hydrochloric acid is to stop the enzymatic action of salivary amylase just now. Because the optimum pH for salivary amylase just now, if you still remember, is between 6.5 to 7. And the next function is to kill bacteria in the food. As for the mucus, the function of mucus is to protect the stomach wall from the reaction of hydrochloric acid and also digestive enzyme. In other words, the function is to protect the stomach wall. Now, we look at the process that happens in the stomach. Start from the first one. The food in the stomach is mixed with the gastric juice. 
okay, which are made of hydrochloric acid and pepsin just now. Okay, the food is then churned by the peristalsis action. Okay, of course, the peristalsis action is due to the contraction and relaxation of the stomach wall. This happened for a few hours. So you can see here, right? This one is the chemical digestion happen here. This one is the physical digestion happen here. The content in the stomach then change to semi-fluid state, what we call as chyme. Okay. Then later, this is the third process. Next process. This chime will enter the duodenum slowly. Duodenum is part of small intestine. Okay, then chime enter the duodenum slowly when the sphincter muscle relax. Okay, this is the sphincter muscle. So the chime will enter slowly into the duodenum. Now, in small intestine. The digestion of three types of food classes that are carbohydrates, proteins, and lipid occurs. Okay, we are going to see the parts of small intestine first. Small intestine consists of three parts. The first part is known as duodenum, the second part is jejunum, and the third part is ileum. So, duodenum is the first part of the small intestine which received chyme just now from the stomach. Duodenum also received bile. This bile is produced by this liver and duodenum also received pancreatic juice which is secreted by the pancreas. So, this is pancreas. Okay, it will secrete the pancreatic juice into the duodenum through the pancreatic duct. Okay, so this pancreas, okay, just now I mentioned pancreas secret, secret pancreatic juice. So this pancreatic juice consists of pancreatic amylase, consists of trypsin enzyme, and consists of lipase enzyme. Okay. So just now for the bile which is produced by the liver, it will then store in the gallbladder before it is secreted into the duodenum via bile duct. Now we look at the function of organ liver. This one I have mentioned just now. The liver will produce bile. The gallbladder will store the bile. The bile will then flow through the duodenum through the bile duct. This one I've just mentioned in the previous slide. Now we look at the function of the bile. The function of the bile, the first one is to neutralize the acidic chyme. Remember in the stomach just now, the chyme is in the acidic form because there was hydrochloric acid released in the stomach. So the bile will neutralize the acidic chyme. The second function of bile is to prepare the alkali medium, which is pH between 7.6 to 8.6, which is the optimum pH for the enzyme action in the duodenum. And the third function, okay, this is first, this is the second. And the third function of the bile is to emulsify lipid. How to emulsify lipid? The bile will break down lipid into tiny droplet. So when the lipid is in the form of tiny droplet, it will increase the surface area of the lipid so that the lipase activity will be faster. Now we look at the chemical digestion that happened in duodenum. Okay, remember just now pancreatic juice 
Okay, in pancreatic juice, there are pancreatic amylase, there are trypsin, and there are lipase. Alright, so we are going to see the function for each of the enzyme. Okay, so for the pancreatic amylase, it will help the hydrolysis of starch become maltose. So the word equation starch plus water because hydrolysis process with the hops of pancreatic amylase will become maltose. Trypsin will then hydrolyze polypeptide into shorter peptides. Just now polypeptide is the product from the stomach. So the word equation polypeptide plus water with the help of trypsin will become peptides. Whereas lipids will hydrolyze lipid into fatty acid and glycerol. The word equation lipid plus water with the help of lipids will become fatty acid and glycerol. Now we look at the digestion that happens in the ileum. That is the last part of the small intestine. Remember just now the first part is known as duodenum, second part of small intestine is duodenum, and the last part is ileum. Alright, so the glands on the ileum wall will secrete mucus and intestinal juice. This intestinal juice contains enzyme maltase, sucrase, lactase, lipase, and erepsin. And the alkali medium in the ileum allows the enzyme to act at its optimum, meaning all this enzyme works the best in the alkali medium. So now we are going to see the carbohydrate digestion that occurs in the ileum. So carbohydrate digestion occurs with the help of maltase enzyme, sucrase enzyme and lactase enzyme, these three. Right? So maltase will hydrolyze maltose into glucose. Word equation, maltose plus water because this is hydrolysis process. With the help of enzyme maltase will become glucose. Sucrase will hydrolyze sucrose into glucose and fructose. Word equation sucrose plus water with the help of enzyme sucrase will become glucose and fructose. Lactase will hydrolyze lactose into glucose and galactose. Word equation lactose plus water with the help of lactase, will produce glucose and galactose. Next is lipase. Lipase enzyme helps in the lipid digestion. Lipase will hydrolyze lipid into fatty acid and glycerol. Word equation lipid plus water with the help of lipase will produce fatty acid and glycerol. And the last enzyme that contains in the intestinal juice is erepsin. Erepsin involved in the protein digestion. Erepsin will hydrolyze peptide into amino acid. So peptide plus water with the help of erepsin enzyme will produce amino acid. So glucose, fructose, galactose, fatty acid glycerol and amino acid are already in the simplest form of nutrient and they are ready to be absorbed. We have come to the end of the topic. If you want to take the quiz on this topic, click at the link that I have provided below. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and see you again later. Bye-bye.